Phase two is a crucial stage of recovery after limb lengthening, and that is the rehab conditioning of the soft tissues. What's up guys, Victor from Cyborg for Life, and today we're gonna go over the second phase of recovery after limb lengthening surgery, which is the conditioning of the muscles, fascia, nerves, blood vessels, and skin. So first up we have the muscles, which are what move your bones so that you can walk, run, lift weights, and so on. Now, after lengthening, there's two main concerns that come up, which are overall muscle weakness, because you've been pretty much immobilized for several months, and the other is a lack of flexibility. Now, we're gonna talk about muscle strengthening in its own separate recovery phase video, but let's break down muscle flexibility because there's a few things you should know if you wanna properly recover. One, you could develop a muscle contracture where things become really tight and you have a limited range of motion in your joints. Two is something called sarcomerogenesis, which is the creation of new sarcomere or contractile units of the muscle fiber due to extreme muscle stretching during lengthening. And three is known as fiber splitting, which is when the muscle fibers will actually split apart with a new myosatellite cell of its own due to the extreme eccentric loading and stretching of the muscle during lengthening, essentially leading to something called hyperplasia, forming new muscle growth. We're, we're gonna talk about that later. Now, according to an interesting article where the researchers wanted to measure the effects on muscle growth after passive mechanical stretching, like limb lengthening, they state that the best way to avoid a contracture stems from lengthening no faster than one millimeter per day and no more than 20% of a particular bone length. Also, if a muscle is stretched beyond its physiological limit or reserve slack, then sarcomerogenesis and fiber splitting could happen to ensure that you have a proper functioning you know, muscle fiber after everything is said and done. Now, this explains why you know, your muscles become longer and have more potential for growth after limb lengthening. But how does this all relate to flexibility? Well, you probably know what I'm gonna say, right? Yep, stretching. That's the key to ensuring that you have proper sarcomeric alignment you know, as new muscle tissue is being laid down. Kind of like the machine that helps lay down new railroad tracks. So how much should you stretch? Well, it really depends, but most of the patients that I've talked to find that stretching in small bouts around two to four times per day on top of a professional physical therapy session usually does a trick. They also notice that more stretching is needed the more you start to lengthen your bones. But now the question is, how hard should you stretch? Well, there's a lot of research that examines the intensity of stretching, comparing things like low load, prolonged stretching to high load, brief stretching. And when it comes to limb lengthening, you're gonna probably do a combination of the two. So before surgery, you can do the typical higher load, passive stretching with your own body weight and a strap. Then starting about one or two weeks after surgery, you're gonna probably be instructed to start some lower load prolonged stretches in addition to your typical strap assisted stretches because it does cause less tissue damage, yet it still improves your flexibility. So for your tibia lengtheners, things like a foot brace or a night splint, like from Dynasplint, can help maintain dorsiflexion and prevent ankle equinus contractures. And then for you femur lengtheners, things like having your ankle on a pillow and using good old gravity can help prevent knee contractures. And then once you've you know, achieved full bone consolidation, you can gradually increase the best form of natural stretching, which is walking. I mean, I personally remember, you know, over the course of just weeks, I regained a huge amount of flexibility by just walking around. Now you're asking, Vic, what stretches should I focus on? Well, back to you femur lengtheners, you should do a lot of the posterior chain and hip muscles because they get really tight. So be sure to stretch things like your hamstrings, you know, laying in a prone position with a hook strap um, around the ball of your foot, lay back, pull your leg up. Um, the hip flexors to stay ahead of that anterior pelvic tilt or the duck ass, using things like the traditional or modified Thomas stretch, um, along with a lower back stretch because that's another factor. Um, the TFL, tensor fascia latte, uh, glute medius piriformis with a light crossover to reduce the chance of developing a lot of those wide legs. And for you tibia lengtheners, stretch the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The gastrocnemius, you can sit up straight with your knee straight, uh, hook strap around the ball of your foot, pull back. And for the soleus, do the same thing, but keep your knee slightly bent. And then you should also do some foot circles to help keep the peroneus, the extensors, and the tibialis anterior muscles loose. Oh, and be sure to do that same knee extension stretch that you did for the hamstrings because that good old gastroc does cross the knee joint and can get really tight, you know, adding to the potential of a knee contracture. But hold on, we're not done yet because the muscles aren't the only concern when it comes to the flexibility. In fact, the fascia, which is the thin sheath of connective tissue that encases the muscles, can develop these things called trigger points or knots that are usually sore to the touch and they can restrict your movement and or cause some degree of muscle weakness. So what do you do about it? Well, two things, self-assisted tools like a roller stick, foam roller, or massage gun, uh, just like the one that I always suggest. What, I can plug my own promos. <laughs> but anyway, seriously, these things work amazingly well to help break up scar tissue adhesions, release trigger points. Um, they even help you to warm up the muscles prior to stretching. And I also use a massage gun, you know, or used to use uh, one before working out to help prime my muscles for maximum performance. 
But do you want to know the king of myofascial release? It's a treatment modality called instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization, ice them or east them. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, some of the specific brand names that you might have heard of are ASTEM or the Graston Technique. And essentially, a physical therapist who's certified in this technique will take their hard plastic and or contoured metal tools and go straight Michael Myers on your legs. So brace yourself because it does hurt a little bit. But this could be such a powerful tool in your rehab arsenal. It can be used to expedite recovery during your distraction and consolidation phases. And even though research is still emerging because these tool-assisted techniques are relatively new, based on my personal patient testimonial, I'm confident that they work. I mean, my therapist used it on my patellar tendon after the insertion of the intramedullary nail into my tibia, and I think that's one of the major reasons why I was able to regain a significant amount of function in my knee joint. All right, so next up is the impact that lengthening has on the nerves. So researchers use electrophysiological tests to measure the motor and sensory conduction velocities of the lower leg nerves in five patients undergoing bilateral tibial lengthening with the Elizarov ring fixator. And they found that there was a slight reduction in nerve conductivity meaning that there was a partial muscle denervation. However, all these patients were diagnosed with a form of dwarfism, whose nerves typically experience greater traction um, over that of a typical discrepancy patient or a functionally normal cosmetic patient would. So I looked into another publication examining 36 patients with a discrepancy, either due to congenital or you know, traumatic reasons, who lengthened at an average rate of 0.9 millimeters per day and also showed a reduction in conduction velocity after distraction was completed. This means that it wasn't damaged during the surgery. Now, both studies did show that the common peroneal nerve had the greatest decrease in nerve conduction uh, due to the higher likelihood of compression being impinged near the fibular head, possibly leading to something called drop foot. Another issue patients might complain about is nerve irritation due to partial damage from the lengthening or just being too forceful with their stretching, you know, causing them pain. And since the myelin sheath in the axon body tend to regenerate at about one millimeter per day. This is another reason why surgeons tend to stick around this average distraction rate for ideal outcomes. So what can you do to stop lengthening from getting on your nerves? I know, not funny. Well, number one, the surgeon could decompress your common peroneal or any other nerve that's being overcrowded. Um, and some will do this prophylactically, while others might take action at the first sign of symptoms. Um, and one of the symptoms might be, you know, weakness in your dorsiflexion of your foot or your big toe. Another thing that you can do is desensitize hypersensitive nerves that flare up and make it hard for you to focus on work or go to sleep. And many physical and occupational therapists will use different objects along the affected area, you know, increasing pressure or abrasiveness so that your nerves can kind of recalibrate themselves. Um, you could also use a TENS or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation unit um, under the guidance of your physical therapist. And finally, you could stimulate weak or sluggish motor nerves with an EMS or electrical muscle stimulation unit. Uh, in fact, in my next video, I plan to do a review video on the one that I've been using while I've been down and out. Yep, another promo. <laughs> okay, so the last two aspects of soft tissue recovery relate to after lengthening, more into the consolidation and beyond stages, and they are increased blood flow and skin care. So blood flow is regulated by your blood vessels, and when you lengthen your bones, there's an upregulation in the formation of these new blood vessels, a process called angiogenesis. And the more blood flow you have to a particular area, the more efficient nutrient delivery and thus recovery will be. In fact, a study done on the tibial lengthening in dogs showed that at the site of the break, the osteotomy, there was a tenfold increase in blood flow in the first two weeks after surgery, a four to five X increase during the distraction phase, and about a two to three times higher increase in blood flow during the consolidation phase over the control group. And the max amount of new blood vessel formation seems to stem from the fiber zone of the callus if you distract at about 0.7 to 1.3 millimeters per day, showing that limb lengthening itself has pro-angiogenic properties within the bone. Now in the muscle tissue, if enough hypoxia inducible factors are present, such as an anaerobic environment with low oxygen content, it could also ramp up angiogenesis. And what type of activity do you know that fits that bill? That's right, high intensity cardio. But you're obviously not gonna be running around or sprinting anytime after lengthening, so how do you instigate this process? Well, you're most likely gonna be out of shape because you didn't do any fitness activity for a long time. And so when you pick back up, you're, mo you're gonna notice that the low intensity cardio is gonna feel like high intensity cardio. And just a few weeks of conditioning should do the trick. But if you're doing cardio during your entire distraction phase, either because you have a weight bearing device or you've been doing stationary recumbent biking, then once your bone is consolidated, gradually increase the intensity of your cardio sessions using a closed chain you know, machine like an elliptical or just go harder on the biking. 
And finally, skincare. Even with the most minimally invasive technique, it's a given that after limb lengthening or any other surgery, you're gonna end up with scars from the incisions. I have several scars from my surgeries over the years. In fact, I just added a new one to the collection. <laughs> but don't worry, they'll blend and fade quite a bit over time. And I also find that most patients don't even care, but some do. So what do you do to care for your skin after your lengthening devices are removed? Well, first you can apply some sort of skin ointment at around three weeks when your incisions are fully closed. Then you can progress to more moisturizing lotions or a light scar serum that contains elastin, collagen, vitamin E, vitamin C, tea extracts, and so on. But be sure to massage it into the scar so that it can break up that rough tissue. Also keep it out of the sun. Scars that are exposed to harsh sun rays uh, can darken permanently. So unless you have a lot of hair over the area, um, then either apply a high SPF suntan lotion to the scar or wear shorts or pants depending on what bone segment you had lengthened. But if it's extremely bothersome to you, at around the year mark after you get the devices removed, you can elect to get laser scar removal, which will significantly reduce the appearance of the scars. But limb lengthening surgeons are so good at what they do, I mean, they might as well be plastic surgeons because they really do keep their technique so clean, so neat, and you probably won't care afterwards. Oh, and a lot of patients wonder about stretch marks and whether or not lengthening can cause them to form. Technically, yes, but I don't think I've heard of anyone who got them yet. And I think it's because, you know, although you're lengthening you, you, and stretching the skin rather quickly, you're also losing weight due to metabolic increase and muscle atrophy. So they kind of counteract each other, basically meaning that you're in the clear. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. And until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out. Peace. Muscles, fascia, nerves, blood vessels, and skin. Muscles, fascia, nerves, blood vessels, and skin. Oh my. <laughs>